happy Tuesday. It's a lovely sunny day uh, in Northern California and, and I'm home. I'm home after four different locations in four different weeks from South Africa to Paso Robles, back here to Nevada, and then Oregon. I am back in Nevada and I will be here for at least the next nine weeks. So a little bit of consistency in my life um, with the run into what will be a uh, summer break for my kids as well as my trip to Florida to attend a conference out there. And we'll do a live episode from the hotel room of that conference. So it will be different, interesting, special, or just mundane and boring like I normally am. When prepping for this week's live session with all of you, I sort of put down one, two, three, four, five topics. And honestly, I think they're all important but they're all really, really negative. So I could have gone with the poor state of the economy and just everything that's going on in the world right now. I consider talking about global pricing and massive overruns that I'm seeing from certain accountants out in the market at the moment, but that felt like I was going to be whining too much. Um, I was going to discuss people overselling and under delivering and the negative effects that has on the accounting industry. And I thought, maybe, maybe not. That might be a little too dark uh, for a Tuesday. I want to talk about poor communication, the effect it can have on your clients as well as in your team. And I do think that's a very important topic, but I do want to come back to that. And maybe I will dig into that next week. Um, It could be a little negative, but there is a positive side to it. And then the last one was lack of service delivery in the accounting industry and I know tax season is crazy. I know it's really busy, but I am getting multiple requests for people to move uh, tax providers. And number one reason is that they feel like they're not being heard or valued by their tax provider. Um, Number two is they feel like they're paying too much for basically radio silence. So really both options are about service delivery. But because yesterday was April 15th and tax day, and most of you people who are in the tax space are probably really exhausted and don't really want to hear about it, the timing is probably not ideal. So maybe we'll we'll pencil that one in for some time in May and sort of discuss that a little bit in more detail on how we can improve our service delivery. So that sort of was my five topics, and we're almost three minutes into this, and I basically don't have anything to talk to you about which is a little bit weird. So I thought we'll do a little bit something different. I thought I would pull up my LinkedIn and we'd sort of play uh, a game. I'm gonna go to LinkedIn, I'm gonna hit the home button and it's currently sorted by top articles and I will scroll till I find my first accounting one, true accounting one. Here's one by uh, Isaac Perdomo five ways you can leverage custom GPTs to grow your firm. Really, really interesting topic, but honestly, I don't have much value to add there. Um, Isaac is a specialist in AI and you should give him a follow on LinkedIn if you really wanna learn how to automate your firm and be a little bit better. Let's roll to the next one. We've got uh, Dominic Piscopo, CPA, a podcast host of the big four transparency.com. Um, It is a bit of an insert with one of my good friends, Roman Villard, Uh, both wonderful people to follow on LinkedIn. You should go do it. And I will actually be on on recording an episode with Dominic soon as I'll be a guest on his podcast. I'm really excited for that one. And here we are. This looks like a, a good one. This is talking about payroll software and this is from my friend nicole mckenzie we're actually going to connect later this month and and catch up and talk about what we're doing in our firms and we do that a couple of times a year so shout out nicole mckenzie but she writes why i love gusta integration with next insurance i received this email today tldr without me doing anything next found a cheaper working comp policy for my business we're also recommend next to clients we moved to gusto last year and they saved seven thousand and seven thousand dollars an hours on admin time dealing with the work this comp was so i love these types of posts one i really love gusto for me the best payroll platform out there for small businesses 
And if you've got tons of like different benefits and you probably more than 30 people, I don't see you as small anymore. So I know there's going to be some haters out there that it sort of falls over a little bit. Sure. But for my client size, less than 10 employees generally, Gusto is just the best. And their customer service isn't as bad as you think it is. Go try some of the others. It sucks. Uh, I love Gusto. And Next Insurance is a wonderful option for workers' comp. It really is affordable. It really does make a big difference in the sort of ease of getting a policy. And if you set things up quite quickly, their audit process is really, really easy. Um, you know, they're talking, of, you know, Nicole goes on to talk about order renewals, which are great. They send you the policy. Are you happy? Yes, go for it. Wonderful. Gusto, wonderful payroll platform, Next Insurance, wonderful workers' comp option, especially for service businesses. But always look out, you know, especially if you've got some interesting industries, especially high risk industries where people are out in the field like wineries, it is worth getting a second opinion and seeing if you can get a better price. But Next Insurance and its integration with Gusto is an absolute fantastic option for most small businesses out there. So shout out to Nicole for what is a great post. I'll give her a little like over here. Uh, live likes on LinkedIn. We'll move down. Let's see. That's no, that's not accountants. That's not accountants. Ooh, there's one that I haven't seen one. Uh, Yuri Kapilovic, the Bun CPA, another wonderful uh, follow on LinkedIn. Go give him a, a shout out. And if you're out on the, on the East Coast, a really good person to go enjoy some of his networking events. Um, it looks like he's giving a quick rundown of his tax season and being really open with sort of where he is in terms of growth year on year. So that's really interesting take on sort of what he's been doing, which just shows how on top of things he is so that he's able to provide that information. He goes 70 clients, 140 returns, so many lessons learned. Here's the financial snapshot of one of the most challenging and simultaneously rewarding busy seasons of my life. I'm currently working on finalizing my billing and have another 55K to build. Now that you have the metrics, roughly 555K tax season, only revenue, but over two and a half times growth in the last year. Absolutely fantastic to see people doing well, especially good people like Yuri, people who have really worked hard to build a business that he is proud of and a business that fits his lifestyle so that he's not only able to do the things he loves, but spend time with his wonderful family. And uh, Yuri went through a lot of different uh, CPA firms, uh, big, medium size, and really most of the time didn't enjoy the experience and has taken all the best things from those firms and taken away the things he doesn't like to create a wonderful firm. So it's wonderful to see somebody like Yuri just being successful and sharing it with all of us. And there's some great little uh, lessons of here. If you follow me sometimes, you'd see that a month ago I shared my daily schedule. Great. It just shows about his how he's finding balance in his life, going to the gym, kids stuff, work, pickups, all that type of stuff. So wonderful. Um, managing his number of new clients coming in, making sure they have scope management, setting his minimum fee at a fairly high level to make sure that the people coming in understand his worth. Wonderful lessons on pricing. Uh, keep building, keep moving. I've been rocked in the face a few times with setbacks during taxis and miscommunication with clients, missed items and returns, upsets here and there. Truth is I've taken this stuff very personally, but my clients were understanding everything smoothed over. Point is the setbacks hurt and it's hard to push through. Important lesson there, learn from your mistakes and figure out how to do things better in the future. And then last point, he talks about social media um, and just being a little bit more cognizant of his time spent there. Uh, two and three hours isn't exactly productive. So not spending too much time on social media, but using it in a productive way. So a wonderful post by Yuri. It's actually got a massive amount of, um, uh, you know, 94 um, likes, 28 comments, and one repost. He's sharing financial information, being super wide open. So I'm not surprised it's a post that's doing well. So that is from Yuri Kaplovic. Great little post. Go find that one out as well. I'm going to hit the little refresh button here and go from top to recent. Let's see if we can find some new interesting information that we can talk about. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo, scroll, scroll. A lot of second connections popping up, which means people are liking posts. If you really want to help people out with their um, social media, like, comment, all that stuff is really helpful because it puts it on somebody else's timeline. So like, I'm seeing posts here of people that are not in my network because people in my network have given those posts a little bit of love. 
So I'm still scrolling. These are all second connection just shows this time of day, people are mostly busy interacting. And that's probably the time, you know, it's sort of lunch time on the East Coast and it's here at 10 a.m. in the morning. So people are probably just, you know, scrolling, loving, discussing, trying to find some of their own ideas, I'm guessing. I'm just scrolling like crazy. This is this is very impressive. Um, and it's different people liking it as well. So it shows the power of LinkedIn and the way it works that if you are a person that is willing to put in some time, you can really get some good reach and help a lot of people. We're still in the second, 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 second. Pretty crazy. Maybe we won't even find one year as we just continue to slow down. I mean, I feel like I need to shout out some of the people that are giving the likes and being interactive. And it's different people almost every single post. Um, the post on Kelly Slater, that's probably interesting, but it's not in English. So I'm not going to struggle through that one. Um, gosh, this is probably terrible listening. Oh, Jeannie Whitehouse. So Jeannie Whitehouse is founder of the impactful advisor it president and she also has uh, a cpa firm now what's interesting about Jeannie is that she operates in the same industry as i do she is the accountant to the wine industry um and it's pretty great because this actually is a post on a, you know on a show that she's going to be on it's, you know it reads you did it you survived another tax season now what join me this thursday april 18th for a webinar with Snyder on what's next, how to service your clients outside the tax season and tools to help you. So talking a little bit about client service, upselling and making sure you're showing your work. That feels like a great way to spend some time. So I'm gonna give Jeannie a like, and Jeannie is, you know, one of the, she has over 100,000 people on LinkedIn. If you're not following her, you definitely need to go give that, give that a, a follow. She is an incredible person. Um, her and I have had some great conversations over the time, trying to figure out how her business and my business could work together a little bit more. We sort of run parallel paths, but not work too much together. She's had partnerships with other similar firms to mine for many, many years. And that's sort of great. I love people understanding who they work with, who they trust and keeping keeping it close in the family. And I appreciate that. Um, that's a LinkedIn influencer. That's a third connection. Second connection, third connection. Oh, here's another one. Yeah. Uh, Katie McConnell Olson. Katie McConnell Olson is a really interesting person, especially if you're looking to hire or looking to be hired. She has a wonderful um, business that I think a lot of people would be interesting. It's called Growth Wise Search Partners. And it's she's a little bit more than a recruitment agency. She really helps businesses find the right people. And she doesn't charge a percentage of the salary. So she's not going to be there trying to push you to pay people more so she can get more. She comes in with the consulting fees and helps you through the process to do it. I think it's probably one of the best ways for any people to go about looking for their next recruitment firm is to pay a consulting fee rather than a percentage of the finder's fee. Now I understand the percentage of the finder's fee could leave in a situation where you don't have to pay anything, right? Or a very minimal amount. But I think when you've got somebody that you can trust because you're paying them a fee and then they're going to help you find the best candidates, you can understand that they're working in your best interest rather than their own best interest because they're not just trying to line their pocket. They already know how much they're going to get paid. So now they're focused on helping you. And I think that is a really interesting way to be working with. And I know if I need to use a recruitment agent here in the US in the future, that is the type of methodology I want to focus on. I will go to Katie and ask her for help. If she can't help me, I'd like to find somebody that charges in a similar way. Understand there it's a partnership rather than just a fee grab. So Katie McConnell Olson, I'm gonna give her a like here. Uh, it's an internal HR department. We work hands on, so it's an internal hiring position. But you know, reach is always great for that. So that'll be one. So let's find one more. Yeah, there's another big name on the list, and this is Paul Barnhurst. You guys will know him as the FPNA guy, uh, the F Panda guy. Um, he's the founder of FPNA, provide training content, helps FPNA find people. Great. So what he's got to be at three hours ago, 39, 40 likes, 23 comments, tip of the day, learn Excel well in your early, early in your career. Trust me, it'll pay dividends. And in, in one thing I would do differently, if I could do again, I would have invested a lot more time in Excel, investing in a course or courses and is a great way to do this. Let me know if the comments, if you disagree or agree. 
great advice for anybody getting into the business world in general. If you're at college right now, go learn how to use Excel, you know, Google Sheets, any of those, you know, spreadsheet type applications, super helpful as a bookkeeper, as an accountant, if you want to go into the finance planning analytics world, knowing how to use that software very well is a great way to upskill yourself. If you and another person have the same credentials, same background, but you're better at using the spreadsheet software, I promise you, you'll get the job. People are looking for speed and the ability to use creative ways to get the answers. So learn the basics, great. Learn the shortcuts, it'll make you faster. And then learn some of the more advanced formulas, pivots, lookups, all those are wonderful things because it will help you stand out. The better you are at using a spreadsheet tool, the easier your job becomes as somebody in the accounting and finance world. So I 100% agree. I'm going to give him a little support icon over here. I'm going to even give it a little comment. Agreed. Fantastic advice. Boom. So I know today has been a little bit different and maybe call it lazy, unprepared, whatever you want to call it, but I think it's quite nice. And we're going to be able to sort of, uh, you know, give some, some interesting feedback. I've given you a couple of names that you could go follow on LinkedIn. You should be following me if you're not, you know, whatever. But, you know, Paul Barnhurst, FBNA guy, really great opportunity there. Nicole McKenzie, uh, Yuri Kapilovic, um, who else? I will put a, put a list of the people I mentioned in the, in the description of this video. But I really love LinkedIn. And honestly, just going through that and looking for some positive messages to some great ideas, I feel pretty good. And honestly, I was feeling a little negative coming into to this discussion today. I only had negative topics. I still got this list of negative topics that I have to come back to because they are important talking points. But I think just spending a little bit of positive time scrolling through LinkedIn, showing you the people I'm interacting with, maybe sharing some new names that you haven't heard before, though they a lot of them are very big names on the LinkedIn world. So if you're in the accounting space, you probably know who they are. But if not, go give them a a follow, maybe try connect with them and say, hey, Zane Stevens, who they might not even remember who that is, uh, said I should follow you. So here I am trying to connect and learn from them. Interact with their posts. They're all wonderful people that share really great advice about running their own businesses, finding balance in their lives, and just being good people. So I highly recommend go give them a follow. Go give me a follow on LinkedIn as well. Connect with me after this one. Say, hey, I listen to Prodia Weekly. I'm glad you were able to dig into to some of the LinkedIn profiles. It's nice to connect with you. Love to connect with many of you as possible. Have good conversations and come up with some ideas and thoughts from what other people are saying. You know, I too try focus on what is the conversation and follow that conversation and have provide my own insight into it. And LinkedIn is one of the ways that I do it. I'm on Twitter, I'm on Instagram, but LinkedIn is where I spend my time. It's the place where I feel I can add the most value and the place where I feel like I get the most value. So again, a little bit different today, but I do feel a little bit better than I did heading into this. I'm glad I was able to stay away from my five very negative topics. Um, I'm probably going to cross the first one off. Who wants to talk about the economy? It's important, but probably not the place. And we'll focus on some of these accounting topics uh, on future episodes. And I appreciate you putting up with me this week. I appreciate you putting up with me every week. And I'm looking forward to a little bit of consistency. Get to see this wonderful background for the next at least eight more episodes after this. And um, I appreciate every single one of you that give it a listen every single week. Um, I do this for you. Well, like I said, we're going to push it for 52 weeks. If there's enough of you listening, I'll carry on for another 52. If not, I'll just say thank you and disappear. But have a wonderful week. Be kind. Until next time, goodbye.